you mentioned Andre the Giant, recently had a uh, very moving HBO documentary I done saw about it. him. Uh, do you have any uh, particular memories or, or something about Andre you can add? You know, there's only two or three things about Andre. Uh, once we uh, were coming back from Ribera Steakhouse in Tokyo. Now, this was before the second one was open. This was in Gotunda, the one that Ribera's dad, dad, the dad had, right? Right. And we were coming back, and, and Paul Ellering said to us, and we were walking back one night. We were off a couple of days, and he says, oh, I think there's a bar here called the Pink Pussycat. A lot of the guys used to stop here and go to. Japanese had the most ridiculous names for a lot of places. Right. That didn't make sense. Also, we hear this music playing, and we hear this ho, 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 ho laughing. We <laughs> go in there, there's nobody in there except the owner of the bar, who we found out was Andre's girlfriend, and Andre's sitting in a little freaking chair that looked like a Barbie chair. Right. Yo, know, his, his, not even one butt cheek fit on the chair, right? <laughs> and, and it was Andre. That was our first time meeting Andre. And, of course, you know, here we come in with the bandanas, and he knew right away who we were, you know, and who doesn't know the giant, right? Right. Second time was when, uh, when Demolition was jumping on when we first went to WWF. We came down and saved Andre, and then he ended up being in our corner when we would wrestle Demolition right. for a couple of matches. Then he was too sore with his knees and hips, and that's when he'd go. But I'll never forget, man. I was sitting on a I was sitting on the bus. You know, when you go over to UK, you ride on a on a bus going over to uh, town to town in London, and we were actually going from like Berlin to England somewhere. And I go to sit on the bus, and right, the only seat left on the bus because I overslept was freaking next to Andre. <laughs> so now I got like a half of my own butt cheek on the seat because it was a booth, right? And Andre's sitting there, and of course he's drinking a bottle of wine, which literally. It was a big bottle, and this is his hand on the bottle of wine. Looked about that big, right? Couldn't even see the label on the wine. His hands were so monstrous, right? And so I'm sitting there, and behind me comes Flair. Now Flair sees me sitting there, like, and I'm 320. He comes in and he starts cracking up, and I said, "What are you laughing at, you idiot?" Like Dex, I've known <laughs> Flair for a lot of years, right? He goes, "You look like a ventriloquist dummy on Andre's knee." <laughs> That's how big Andre was, right? Andre was freaking monstrous, and just his head and his hands. You know, my hand was sitting next to his in a bar, and his, his looked like two of mine sitting there. And it, it, that was one of my other experiences with Andre, man. Then he made me go eat two Chinese dinners back-to-back because -back he wanted to go drink. <laughs> that was another one. Interesting. You, you, I just get done eating, and he goes, you boss. He called everybody boss. Boss. Come here. Yeah, yeah, boss, because you got to call him boss back. Right. And uh, he goes, uh, you hungry? I said, bro, I just got done eating a sizzling steak. He goes, no, no, you need to eat more. I'm going, oh, no, but nobody tells Andre, no. You don't right. want to get him on the bad side. Yet, so that's what I heard. So I was still relatively young. I said, okay, whatever you want to do, Andre, Andre let's go. So I went back again, and he drank two bottles of wine. And I had another sizzling steak dinner, and that was it. I said, now I'm stuffed. Now I want to go up and sleep for two days. I got so much red meat <laughs> right. in me. Right. I can't breathe right now, you right. know? Yeah, and that was my other, my third story with Andre, man. I, yeah, I, we got along good with Andre. Did everybody, did people walk on tippy toes around him? Oh, yeah. yeah. If Andre didn't like you, man, he'd just slam you in the middle of the ring and sit on you and fart in your face. Right. He well, would do that to guys. Really? Oh, yeah. What are you going to do? In a 500 pound ass in your face. You can't move it. In the documentary, they talk about if anybody who didn't belong in the locker room ever meandered back there, he would, he would make oh. sure they would leave. Oh, yeah. He'd scare them to death to kick them out. Right. Andre could move in his day. Yeah. I mean, he was fast for a big guy. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to imagine, imagine what it was like to be seven foot four. 